Welcome everyone. So in this short lecture, I'm going to be talking about uh, Surah Luqman, which is chapter 31 of the Quran, and then verse 25, 26, and then 27. So the three verses that I like to reflect upon. So here in this Surah, in this particular verse, which is 31, 25, verse number 25 of chapter 31, God says, Wala in sa altahum, man khalaka samawati wallar. So they ask you, and if you ask them, who created the heavens and earth? Li yukulun Allahu, they will surely say, it's Allah who created the heavens and the earth, right? So here the Prophet is being told to ask them. So if you were to ask the people who created the heavens and earth, simple question, they would surely say, it's God or it's Allah. Qul alhamdulillah, say all praise is to Allah. Bal aksarahum la ya'lamu. But majority, most people, most of them do not know. So this starts with a question being asked to the people. And then of course, the reply given by the Prophet to people. Therefore, the word qul, right? Say, say thou, is used. Qul alhamdulillah. Bal aksarahum la ya'lamu. And again, if you have not watched my video on the word "pull," right, where Allah is instructing the Prophet to say, even though Allah is saying directly things to different kinds of groups, different people, believers, to non-believers, to mankind, and so forth. But in several instances, I believe it's about over or 270 times, in fact, in the Quran, the word "pull" is used. So if you have not watched the video, I'll put a link. You can kind of take a look at that too. It's quite interesting. But here, once again, if you ask them, if the Prophet, if you ask them who created the heavens and earth, they would surely say Allah. Say all praise is due to Allah or is due to Allah, but most of them do not know, right? Now, the next verse, 26, says, Lillahi ma fis samawati wallar, inna Allahu huwal ghaniyul hamid. To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and earth. Indeed, Allah is free of need, the praise word, right? So it's kind of like repeating all praise to Allah. And here the same thing is being repeated, that everything belongs to Allah in the heavens and earth, and he is free of need, the praise word. Here's the verse that I want to focus on, the next verse, which says, وَلَوْ أَنَّمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَمٌ وَالْبَحْرُ يُمُضُّهُ مِنْ بَعْضِهِ سَبْعَةُ and if whatever trees upon the earth were pens and sea was ink, replenished thereafter by seven more seas, the words of Allah would not be exhausted. Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and wise. So, what does this really mean? What is, what is Allah talking about here? Right? So, again, it starts with the question. Let me scroll up a little bit here once again. Right? So if you ask them who created the heavens and earth, they will say it's Allah. And all praise is to God. But here, it's the explanation of what is actually happening. So if whatever trees and upon the earth were pens and seas, replenished thereafter by seven more seas, the words, Kalimatullah, would not be exhausted. So I was reflecting on this, and I came across a professor, his name is Benoit uh, Mandelbrot, I believe. So let me bring up his coat here, and then I'm going to talk about the concept of how God is, in fact, or has created nature, okay? So just a brief uh, couple of things on uh, this particular professor. His coat uh, is, clouds are not spheres, mountains are not cones, coastlines are not circles. And bark is not smooth, nor does lightning travel in a straight line. This is once again by Benoit Mandelbrot. You can look him up. Researcher, professor, and you can kind of take a look at his work. Now, his work is on fractal geometry, right? So I'm going to navigate to one of the sites here. Well, let me first go here. So the fractal geometry is it basically is a you work in shapes, right, which you see here on the screen. And almost everything in nature, if you were to think about it, 
and focus, you'll notice that everything in nature is actually fractal geometry, like mountains, like any shapes that you see, like the shape that you see here, it's also the same. Similarly, if I were to go to and show you other images like frost crystals, right? Water crystals, snowflakes, and so on. There, there are tons and tons of examples that you can kind of now take a look at. So nature, in fact, is based on a pattern, right? Which is known as, you know, is a geometrical pattern, a fractal geometrical pattern. So you would think that Allah would create or provide guidance accordingly. Therefore, it's called Ihdina Sirat, like the guidance, right? So it's not really, you know, holding your finger and and uh, giving you step-by-step uh, -step instructions. In certain instances, Allah gives us, or God gives us step-by-step -step instructions, very specific instructions, right? But in majority of the cases in the Quran, you'll notice that it's just the guidance that is provided to us. Let me give you an example. So, for example, if you're cold, right, you want to wear a jacket because you want to protect yourself from cold. Now, I would wear a different kind of jacket, and maybe you would wear a different kind of jacket, right? So it doesn't have to be the case where everyone wears the same jacket because Allah told them to wear a jacket, right? So it's not it's not that. It's really just the guidance itself, right? Hey, if you're cold, wear a jacket, right? Or dress yourself warmly. And that's exactly what the Quran gives us, its guidance to mankind. So here in this verse where Allah says, and whatever trees upon the earth were pens and the sea was ink, right? So, in nature, like I said, it's, everything is more of a fractal geometrical shapes. Whereas man or humans, we tend to be more structured. We tend to be more specific. We need to know exactly what needs to be done. And we need someone to tell us. So, we build shapes, right? For example, look at all these cities across the world. They're all pretty much high rise buildings, pretty much straight lines. You have circles, perfect circles perfect squares, rectangles, you get the idea, okay? So humans tend to have or would like everything very, very in a particular manner and structured, whereas nature is also the same. However, it provides a more of a fractal shape, okay? So it has patterns. The important word that I want to highlight here is patterns. Similarly, the book of God is also pattern-based, right? So if you read the Quran over again, like I've been doing for the last decade or so, so you'll notice you, you'll easily identify patterns. Things are repeated over and over and over again. So in this verse, in this context that we just read, people are asking or, or the prophet is being told to ask people who created the heavens and earth. And they would surely say, they would surely say that, hey, it's just Allah who created all the heavens and earth. Cool. So tell them. It's all praise to Allah. So the entire creation of heavens and the earth, it's really, if you look at any shape, and again, I, I welcome your feedback and, and post your comments in the discussion area. So if you find any other nature in a different shape, you know, let me know. But it's pretty much all based on this fractal geometrical shapes which means the definition here is that you know you you see patterns in these shapes but yet it has a fixed volume let me rephrase let me give you the, the definition of fractal geometry so it's basically having infinite possibilities with a fixed volume okay let me repeat that so a shape that has infinite possibilities or infinite insights right possibilities or shapes, yet it has fixed volume. So in the Quran, we see the same thing. So no matter which chapter you open up, no matter which verse or couple of verses you're reading in context, you'll notice you know, it has infinite possibilities, but yet fixed volume because it's a book with 114 chapters and you know, specified number of verses. So that's the the reflection that I was just thinking about and I figured I'd just make this quick video and I value your feedback and insight and see what you have to say about this. But again, look up uh, Benoit Mandelbrot. Um, he was a Polish-born French and American mathematician and polymath. He 
has done a lot of work on this. So we're just gonna take a look at this. Okay, you can see also look at the uh, shapes, cross crystals occurring naturally. So again, you see, for example, if I were to bring this up in a bigger picture, you will notice that each of these shapes is in fact is based on a geometrical shape, right? So it's all uh, fractal geometrical shapes. Infinite possibilities, yet fixed value. So if you were to zoom in into any one of these areas, for instance, you'll notice that each shape would reflect the bigger shape, okay? You get the idea. So I just wanted to, in this brief lesson, talk about chapter 31, verse number 25 through 27. So just reflecting on this. Hope this helps. Salam alaikum.